This is Akaza, Upper Moon 3 from Demon Slayer. He might end up being everyone's favorite Upper Moon when it's all said and done. I picked him up from HobbyGenki.com. He costs 16,790 yen plus the DHL shipping for 4,990 yen. Altogether, 21,780 yen. And in US dollars is $155.50. I paid for this all the way back in September 6th of 2022. It shipped out on February 6th and I got him on February 9th. So before I continue, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. Support the anime channel. Support the blog at otakusen.com. And I stream on Monday nights at 8.30 p.m. Central. So if you guys want to take a look at anime figures, join the live streams on Monday nights at 8.30 p.m. Central. And join the Discord if you guys want to get involved on the live stream. All right, here is the Hobby Genki box. They kind of packaged it kind of funny up top right here i'm kind of confused where i'm supposed to open it up here or down here but i'm gonna go ahead and just open it up here since they like did a lot up here so as you can see right here it is all bubble wrapped over it might need some scissors for this with the tape up here all right, so you had one bubble wrap layer and then you have one plastic layer. The box itself, Aniplex boxes usually go with a theme instead of images of the figure on the box. Across the box, there's the compass needle theme with a dark maroon or very dark reddish color background. There's the Aniplex logo and kanji of Kimetsu no Yaiba, Akaza, the Hakai Satsu Rashin. There's more kanji on the side and on the top of the box. And then some parts of the box has this kind of laminated, it looks like maybe it's bud. I'm not quite sure what is what it is, but it's a cool little nice, you know, subtle thing that they did with the box. It's a little bit different from the Kocho and Gyu Aniplex scale boxes. So overall, it's a neat box, but it's, you know, it's just the box, nothing amazing there. The box quality itself had a dent in one of the corners and a little indent near the corner of the opening of the box. Other than that, the box is in pretty good shape. On the inside of the box, they have the same kind of design on the outside of the box. One thing before talking about the assembly, just be careful when you guys are opening the package because they wrapped it, the packaging with a like a, a really nice layer over the figure and sometimes those things get caught on the figure and of course when things get caught on the figure, things can break. The only thing I'm really looking at is whether I'm supposed to put it right here or right here. One thing you'll actually notice on the base too, the pegs, one's a little bit bigger than the other. So it perfectly kind of tells you exactly how you should align this. All right, it has one job and that is to fit on the pegs. I don't know, but every time I do a scale that I have to put on pegs, it doesn't always align perfectly. And here, it's kind of hard to kind of get it to push in, but it finally fit and it just takes a while. You're most likely gonna scuff up a little bit of his, le of his feet underneath, but that's okay because you're not gonna be able to see it anyways. Here, we'll just take off this one last little plastic piece and boom, here we have him. All right, so let's talk about this figure. Let's start off with the negatives. Guys, there's barely any. This is as perfect and flawless as it gets for the paint and scope. I was super on the fence about getting this one back when I got the Figure Arts Zero Akaza, but I'm pretty damn happy that I got this one, and especially for the price. So let's look at all the things that we typically would look at first. So let's look at the nose. <laughs> Is it too pointy? I don't think so. There was actually a side-by-side -side image of Akaza and Kyojuro that showed their noses in the animation. And the side view of Akaza is literally identical to the figure. So that's amazing. So maybe the paint lining is off. Sometimes with, you know, paint, you know, there could be some smudges. So on this figure, not really. And especially when you look at the figure, there are veins that pop out of the figure, like pops out of Akaza. And there are lines of paint 
his body paint that kind of goes across his body. That's the only time that like it looks off because of the veins. And that actually makes a lot of sense that that would happen. That's not actually a defect or anything like that. Just something to point out like, oh my God, why isn't it perfectly straight? He got veins. So let's go to his hands and his feet. Typically, I would see some smudges here and there because if you look at this, like his hands, his feet, you see the paint like around his fingers a little bit different when you kind of look at like the like his hand compared to the fingers. But it's actually painted on really, really well. The only like real downside to the paint is that, you know, on the figure, like overall on the figure, there's just a little bit of small blue paint speckles on his chest area and around those hand and feet area maybe but you'll see it slightly if you look up really really close on his hands and on his chest but those are very 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 minor compared to any kind of smudges there's none of that on his figure at all this is like near perfection and you know let's take a look at the hair scope it's near perfect too on the back of his head maybe there are a couple spots here and there where the tip of his hair has a darker reddish paint finish than the others. But that's pretty much it. And can we really say, is that, a, is that really a defect? I'm literally pulling at straws here and trying to find a way to criticize this figure. But this is like incredibly done. Like I'm actually very, very happy with how it came out. Only real negative I have to say is actually... It's assembly wise. It's just putting on the pegs. It's not perfectly aligned. And it, it took me a good like 5 to 10, maybe even 15. But probably let's average it around 10 minutes to get those pegs into place on his feet. In the process of that, I scuffed up the bottom of his feet trying to forcibly maneuver him into the pegs. Then the pegs were just really hard to push down on. If you just you know, just tried to put on one peg at a time. It just pushed it down. I was able to eventually get the front foot to get in, but the back leg doesn't want to go fully down. So if there really was a negative to this, it's just the pegs don't actually fit perfectly. And it made me scuff up the bottom of his feet. But, you know, you don't really get to see the bottom of his feet, so it doesn't really matter in the end. Overall, though, guys, this is the scale for me. For me personally, and I think for a lot of people that want, you know, his most iconic pose, and that is the compass needles pose for me. This is the pose that he takes before he beats Kyojiro's ass. And it's just, it's just so damn cool. And he's like an iconic character for me. He is like my favorite upper moon character. You know, I read all of the manga, really, really got me hyped up to see how it's going to be animated. And, you know, Akaza is a very, very big part of Demon Slayer. He'll go down as one of many people's favorite characters, in my opinion. So, you know, the figure itself, it's just a great portrayal of the character. His face, the scope, the painting, like, it's just near flawless. The compass needle base, it, it's not really, like, glow in the dark or whatever. But if you, like, dim the lights a little bit... You know, it has this cool little, you know, it does give it that kind of a glow. But you kind of have to dim the lights a little bit to get the right kind of lighting for this figure. But yeah, it, it's just, it's a great figure. You know, even down to his feet where you get to see the subtle details of the bones of his feet. If you just kind of like <laughs> rub the, the top part of his feet area, it really does feel like the top of your own feet where you kind of get the little bumpiness of the bones in your feet. I just thought that was really cool. And I, I like that there's little veins that pop out of his body. Like, not everything of his body is just, like, super smooth. Like, in no way, shape, or form that does this look like a prize figure. It looks like a great scale figure. So, yeah. This is by far the easiest scale figure, like, I can recommend people to get, like, in a while. If you ask me if you should, it will be yes. The answer is yes. You should get this figure if you're thinking about it, especially if you are a fan of the character and you're looking for one of the options out there for the character. I think this figure right here is the one. And I think the price is fair all the way up to 200 bucks, considering like all of his other options are going to be around that price for those scales. 
or around that size in general. So once again, to reiterate for the price, it is 16,790 yen and I paid the fast DHL shipping at 4,990 yen. So altogether, it was 21,780 yen and it was $155 that I paid. So if you got the boat shipping, uh, you probably paying, you would have paid like less than like 140 bucks or even, you know, less than that. I think at US prices, like at Right Stuff Anime, they have it listed around 180 bucks. But after like tax and shipping and all that, you'll probably end up paying a little bit around like 200 bucks, which I think is still worthwhile for this figure because it's a near flawless figure. It's, ac it's as accurate as to the character as you can be in this most iconic stance. And this figure exemplifies the exact kind of scale figures that I'm looking for in most of my collection. I just want a very clean looking figure that's very accurate to the anime or possibly manga counterpart. I don't need it to have extra, you know, effects in the base. Maybe at the very beginning, like I wanna be wild by the base and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I just want something that looks accurate to what the character is and you know adding other elements that are not necessarily like canon to the figure it's not really that big of a deal to me but if you're making something that is an iconic scene or something like that from the anime and i think that is what this figure is i love that because it takes you right to that scene in mugen train yeah, man, I definitely love this figure. It's near the top of one of my favorites. It's definitely so far of 2023. I don't have that many figures yet, but I can see this one staying at the top of 2023 for me. So yeah, guys, let me know what you guys think about this figure. You like it, you don't like it, you agree, you don't agree with me. But yeah, for 155 bucks, that is not a price for a 1.8 scale that we can really get for something of this stature, unless it's like Kota Bukia or something like that, Kota Bukia, Belfine, but Onyplex scale figures, you rarely don't see it for that price, at least not no more. So yeah, just let me know what you guys think. Do me a favor guys, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already, check out my blog at otakusen.com, check out my anime channel, it's How To Anime Otakusen, and I do live streams on this channel at 8.30 p.m. Central on Monday nights. And if you guys want to get involved on the live stream, join the Discord. We take a look at anime figures. So if you guys have anything you want to take a look at, you could do it ahead of time by letting me know in the Discord. So that way I could pull it up on the live stream. So once again, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. And I'll see you guys on the next video.